In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an important tool that will be useful in analyzing the neoclassical framework, where we're going to look at the, rate, uh, the relationship between the wage rental ratio, the relative cost of, of paying for workers as opposed to using capital, and the relative marginal costs of the final goods. We're going to do this in the context of when X is going to be the capital intensive good and Y is going to be the labor intensive good. So let's make sure that we understand what some of these terms mean. The wage rental ratio is the cost of labor compared to the cost of capital. And we're going to be assuming that both X and Y industries pay the economy-wide wage and they pay the economy-wide cost of capital if they want to use capital. So this is, in terms of something we'll be using in different videos, a kind of long-run model where labor and capital can move back and forth between sectors searching out higher returns. The relative marginal cost is the marginal cost of X compared to the marginal cost of Y is simply this ratio between the cost of actually making the final output using labor and capital. But they're going to we recall that these this ratio has some important other interpretations. One, it's the opportunity cost of X in terms of Y. If you look at the ratio of the marginal cost, it really does tell you the cost of doing one thing compared to the cost of doing the other, that is to say, the opportunity cost. It's also equal to the slope of the PPF in this neoclassical framework. So these are all different ways of saying exactly the same thing, and it's important to keep these in mind as you do this analysis. And finally, if we, if we have perfect competition, so perfect competition is going to give us Px over Py equal to the slope of the PPF, equal to the opportunity cost of x, equal to the relative cost of final output. So now let's take a look at this in terms of a graph. So on one axis, we're going to put the marginal cost of X compared to the marginal cost of Y. It goes from low cost of X to high cost of X. And we're going to have the wage rental ratio on the horizontal axis. So these are obviously going to be related to each other. The cost of labor and the cost of capital are going to be important components of the costs of the final outputs. So, let me just take one particular combination. Let's say that we've got this wage rental ratio. I'm going to pull this out of the air, and there's an associated relative costs of X and Y. Just arbitrarily chosen. And let's imagine a situation where for some reason the wage rental ratio went up. Let's say it's be because the, the cost of labor rose. So in that circumstance when the wage goes up that's going to increase the, rel uh, the cost of both good X and good Y. They both use labor. They're both going to have higher costs. But the question to ask yourself is which one of these industries is affected more by the increase in the cost of labor? And that is clearly going to be industry-wide, the labor-intensive good. So the cost, the marginal cost of Y goes up, the marginal cost of X goes up, but the cost of Y is going to go up faster 
than the cost of x. So if you have these two, this ratio, one the the numerator going up a little bit and the denominator going up a lot, you're going to have a fall in the relative cost of x. So some point say like this. So what we see is that there's going to be a negative relationship between these two when we have good x, the labor-intensive good, in the numerator. Now if you combine all the different possible wage rental ratios and all the possible relative costs of x, you will have this negative relationship. Now a couple of things to note about this. The example that I gave just a moment ago was when the cost of labor rose and the cost of capital stayed the same. And we analyzed the effects of this on the relative costs of the two goods. But it's a much broader concept than that. If the, what matters is the relative wage goes up compared to capital. That could be because the cost of labor went up, as we discussed. It could be that the cost of capital went down. That would give you the same effects on the ratios. It could be that both have gone up, but that the wage rose faster than the, the cost of capital. What matters is what happens to the relative cost of labor. And when that happens, the relative cost of the capital intensive good is going to fall. So this is going to be a general relationship that we use. And now I want to bring in one final component to this. And that is to say, perfect competition in output markets, which allows us to replace the relative cost of these two goods with relative prices. With all of the same arguments about the how the costs of the inputs affects the prices of the final goods rather than uh, vice versa. So, let's take a look at the opposite effect. We were talking about how the wage rental ratio affected the relative prices. There are also ways in which the labor and capital costs will be affected when the relative prices change. So for example, let's say that for some reason, maybe you start out at this point with these relative prices of goods and these relative prices of inputs, and that something causes the demand for X to fall, so that the price of X falls, for some reason. And the price of Y has gone up, so that the relative price falls. So there's a signal out there in the market that X's price has gone down, X is less in demand, and the demand for Y has gone up. Now what does that do to the inputs that are used to make these two goods. All right, so X is the capital intensive good. If the price of X is going down, there's less demand for the input that's used intensively in the production of X. So the, co the cost of X in that circumstance would tend to go down because the demand for the capital intensive good has gone down. So economy-wide, the cost of capital goes down. The price of Y going up, because they had uh, uh, an increase in the demand for that good, is going to bid up the cost of labor. The cost of labor will tend to rise as the demand for the labor-intensive good goes up. 
So what you see here is that if the relative price of X were to fall for some reason, that's going to change the wage rental ratio. There's a, a reaction in the factor markets if the demand of the final goods has changed. So we haven't put this in any kind of trade context, but this is a general relationship for given technologies of for good X and good Y, with X as the capital intensive good, and having this relationship between